This is our third video over circumference and area of circles, all right? Uh, what we're going to focus on here is not really learning anything new as far as how to do the problems, but instead how the directions might change and how they want us to write the answers, okay? Uh, so our objective is I want to be able to apply circumference and area formulas to various scenarios, writing the answer in terms of pi. So this part right here, in terms of pi, is really telling me pi should be part of your answer. We don't want to hit a decimal approximation on the calculator. We want to leave the symbol for pi as it is. So let's just again reflect circumference of a circle. We know that the formula for that is d pi. Area of a circle, we know the formula for that is r squared pi or pi r squared, either way is fine, okay? So these are the two formulas that we're going to focus on in answering these questions. And like I said, in what we're going to do here, there is nothing new. All right, so the first question says find the circumference. In the problem, they give me that the radius is 5. I know to find the circumference, which the formula is d pi, I need to know the diameter. If the radius is 5, then 2 times the radius gives me the diameter. I can then conclude that the circumference is 10 pi yards. I am don't have to do anything else to this. I have 10, and my answer is in terms of pi. Here's how I know that they wanted the answer in terms of pi. Look at the directions. In the directions, they say nothing about approximating or using a decimal representative for pi. All the directions today are going to be the same thing. Because they don't say anything about rounding, they don't want us to use a decimal approximation for pi. All right? So let's take a look at this second scenario. Find the area. Well, I know that area is r squared pi. So in this particular problem, they tell me, they give me, that the diameter is 16. Well, I don't want the diameter, I want the radius. If I take 16 and divide it by 2, I get a radius of 8. So then I know that the area would be 8 squared pi, but I'm not going to leave 8 squared as 8 squared, I'm going to go ahead and square it. And I get 64 pi, and then put my units in there. It would be square feet, because I'm finding area. So a lot of you guys may actually find these a little bit easier, because they don't really rely on you being able to do things on a calculator. All right, how about some like this? the second lesson? Find the circumference given the area. Okay, well, I know that area is r squared pi. Now, they tell me that the area is 100 pi. So if we take 100 pi for the area, and you compare the two sides of this equation, really what they're saying is, what did I square to get to 100? Well, that would give me a radius of 10. Take square root of 100 would be another way to do it. All right? I'm going to take that information. And now find the circumference. The circumference is d pi. Well, I don't know the diameter. But I can quickly calculate that the diameter here would be 2 times 10, or 20. So my circumference would be 20 pi feet. Don't forget, we have to label with units because units were given. All right, how about this last one here? Again, I know they want the answer in terms of pi because they're not telling me any kind of a decimal representation. They want me to find the area given the circumference. So here's what I know. I know that the circumference is d pi. I know that 22 pi is the same as d pi, which tells me d is 22. They want me to find the area, r squared pi. 
I have the diameter to find the radius. I'm going to take 22 divided by 2, and that gives me 11. So I know that my area will be 11 squared pi, and I'm going to go ahead and square that and get 121 pi square feet. I hope this helps. Good luck. Let me know if you have any questions.